Protogen is a database-centric drawing cloning system. Protogen can clone any repetitive CAD diagram automatically changing tags and specifications on each cloned circuit. Protogen can use Excel, Access, DBF or SQL Server to hold your tag and spec data for the clones. You can define the data columns and the column size. Protogen can use a complex sub-diagram structure and change the graphics on clones as well as the text data. Protogen uses templates, i.e. normal CAD diagrams with the final text or attributes replaced with a hashtag formula that links to a database column. The Protogen workflow is simple. We firstly make the template diagrams. While doing this, we add formulae wherever we want text, attributes or graphics to change on the final clones. We then create data tables as required. Today we will see Excel and DBF tables. Next step, we fill the tables with data, graphic choices and clone names. Then we press the button and mass produce the diagrams. Protogen is commonly used for instrument loops, motor starters and I.O. cards. Importantly, Protogen can be used for any repetitive or standardized drawings. It is not limited to electrical and instrumentation drawings. In this demo, firstly, I will add some formulae to a loop diagram template, linking column names to my drawing. Then I will add those columns to my table. Then I will clone the loop diagram a few times and we will inspect those five or six loops. Finally, I will use a slightly more complex Protogen project to make 90 or so IO cards and we'll examine a few of those. I will now demonstrate the use of Protogen in a simple single table project. I have opened a template called simpleloop.dwg. This is a simple loop diagram with an instrument, a junction box and a PLC IO channel. Most of the formulae I want have been added to this template already. I will zoom closer to the field instrument. This is a chlorine gas detector. The instrument has a serial number which needs to change on every new loop. I will make a formula to allow this. The serial number is displayed in a textual CAD entity. To add a formula, I can simply click on this and retype its contents. I will now add a new column name to the system named serial number. The formula is simply the column name surrounded by hashtags, therefore my formula will be hashtag followed by serial number followed by hashtag. I will now look at the loop's junction box. I can see that the terminal number and terminal strip name already have a formula. The multi-core cable and the pair in use are set to load data from a table via a formula. Some of these formulae are used more than once. I will modify the text that contains the junction box name JB234 to include a formula. My new column will be called JB. Text entities that can be used are attributes, text or mText. Protogen allows you to use any colour, layer, line type, font or symbol. I will now show you some automation in this loop's title block. Part or all of the title block data for your whole drawing set can be automated. Your title block can be populated with data from your tables, any columns, any appearance. I have four title block text entities which I want to load from my table. This title block has many other attributes loaded with formulae such as dates, the sheet number and the designer. Title blocks can have up to 100 columns to fill. Let's have another look at the junction box. The junction box formulae highlight a couple of powerful features. Firstly, you can use maths in your formulae. The first of the terminals gets its number from the table column JBTBT1, and that is incremented to load the other two terminal numbers. Secondly, it is okay to combine one or more formulae with fixed text in any text entity on your drawing. An example of fixed text are the words junction box. Finally, you can use one formula in many places, allowing you to enter the key data once, such as a cable name, and have it placed on the drawing many times. Before I use my template, 
I'm going to save it. Changes I make to a DWG file are of little use unless I save those changes. I will now open the data table that I will use with my loop template. This is a simple Excel file with a few column names in the top row. The first column, drawing, is compulsory. The column gives a file name to each clone drawing. The second column, prototype, is compulsory. The column names the template to be used for each clone drawing. The remaining columns are not compulsory. The tag name column names the instrument tag and is also used in the field cables name. The JB TB T1 column is used for the first terminal number on the junction box. I will now add two new columns to load the new formulae I added to my loop template. I will firstly add serial number in column E. Note I need to spell this identically to the spelling used in the template. Formulae are not case sensitive. I will now add a column for the junction box name. This column will be JB. Now that I have columns matching my template formulae, I can start filling in the data for my clones. My first loop file will be called loop1 DWG, and the template to use for loop1 is the template we examined, simple loop. My first tag name is FT1001. I will now fast forward and fill in the first row with data for my first clone. I can copy and paste the remaining rows to make several clones. Obviously, I need to make each row different, otherwise the clones would all be identical. The data changes may be typed in, pasted in, or produced by Excel formulae, or even by Excel VB automation. Before I use my table, once again, I'm going to save it. Now I must open Protogen. As a reminder, so far we've only been working in CAD and Excel, two of the engineer's favourite tools. In Protogen I can see all of the columns and rows in my Excel table. Protogen has some very good editing tools for editing this type of data. Not available in Excel. Before I can mass produce the loop diagrams, I need to select the rows to mass produce. Each row represents a single cloned loop diagram. The Protogen pull-down menu is used to start the data transfer operation. Protogen can transfer data in both directions, from the table to the drawing and from the drawing to the table. We will transfer data to the drawings. You will see on my folder on the left of screen, I now have six new CAD files. The mass production of a simple loop is completed within a few seconds. We will now examine one of those clones. Firstly, the instrument is tagged as FT1005 and the serial number key is set. The field cable name is personalised with the instrument tag name. The junction box name is set to JB234 in the red text with the data from the new column JB. The first terminal number is set at 22 and the following terminals are mathematically derived to 23 and 24. The PLC terminals, rack and slot are set as per the Excel file. Finally, the title block text is all set to my required final values. I will now demonstrate a complex Protogen project to make 89 I.O. cards. This project has two levels of structure. I have a master template and sub-templates. The sub-templates will be superimposed on the masters. Accordingly, this project also has two levels of table, master and sub-tables. This is a master template. The template shows an I.O. card divided into two parts and displayed on a title block. There are 16 cyan anchor point formulae on the master, 8 on each side. Anchor points are used to position sub-templates. Now we will examine a sub-template. This sub-template is a small two-wire analogue input. This template represents one instrument, 
a field cable, two wires and two terminals. Up to 16 sub-templates can be placed on each of our project's master templates. Sub-template arrangements on a master are optional. You can mix, add or omit these on any card as required by your project. I will now open the master table in Protogen. All of the I.O. card data destined for the master template is present in the master table. This includes the clone name in the drawing column and the master template in the prototype column. The I.O. card specifications and the tag name plus details like rack and slot numbers are also provided in this table. As the master template also contains the title block, all the title block information is also in the master table. If I scroll across the table, I'll arrive at some anchor point columns such as CHNLO. This represents the 16 anchor points on the master template. The anchor point column tells Protogen in which table to find the data for the sub-template to be inserted at that anchor point. For example, the first row, CHNLO, is loaded from the sub-analog sub-table. The sub-analog sub-table tells Protogen which sub-template to insert, as well as the wire numbers, cable numbers, and tags for that sub-template. Importantly, the sub-analog sub-table also specifies the anchor point on which to position each sub-template when inserted on the master template. To mass-produce the I.O. card diagrams, I need to select the rows to mass-produce. Each row represents an I.O. card. I will use the Protogen pull-down menu to start the data transfer operation and create the clones. You will see in my folder on the left of the screen, I now have many new CAD files. In this process, Protogen assembles the 89 I.O. card drawings from the component parts and data. Protogen can create 3D assemblies. Protogen gathers table data and inserts it into the templates. Protogen looks up large amounts of catalogue data and inserts it to the templates. Protogen inserts completed sub-templates into master templates. So the 89 complex clones took just under 30 seconds. That's extremely fast and very accurate. We'll now examine a few of those clones. The first clone has a 16-point digital output card driving nine relay coils. The second clone has a 16-point digital input card reading nine contacts. The third clone is an 8-point analog input card reading seven level transmitters. This is using the analog input sub-template we examined earlier, and also the master template we examined earlier. The fourth clone is an 8-point analog output card driving eight valves. And the final card we will see is another 16-point digital input card this time reading 16 limit switches. To wrap it up, I will show you a few more examples of complex Protogen projects. Firstly, Protogen is an ideal tool for filling the circuit data on a panel schedule. The graphics and the text content of the schedule are fully user definable. We can also populate the bus of an MCC single line diagram with a variety of load circuits. For each MCC motor starter defined by our single line diagram, we can insert the control circuit and populate the components and their specs and wire numbers. For the MCC feeder protection, we can position and generate the wiring diagram with Protogen. Protogen can even be used to construct the tiers and buckets for your MCC in 3D. This intelligent model can have its wiring routed automatically by panel des. The final example I will show you is yet another PLC I.O. card. Protogen can be used to increase your productivity and accuracy on a very diverse range of drawings and projects. In summary, the Protogen workflow is simple. We firstly make the template diagrams. Then we add formulae wherever we want text 
attributes or graphics to change on the final clones. We then create data tables as required and fill them in. Then we press the button and mass produce the clone diagrams. How good is Protogen? Well, at Norman Disney Young, they said, from a single click of a button, Protogen's runtime to produce 900 drawings was less than 19 minutes. That really says it all. Thanks for watching the demo.